Hello, every- I can't even talk. It's Friday, everybody. <laughs> Hello. It's live at five. It's also Friday. It's November 30th. I'm Beth Stevens. And I'm Paul Wintorek. And we saw Network last night, and that makes, I almost had a fantasy that you would do like a breakdown, like a, a mad as hell breakdown, like when, when I just saw that moment. I'm going to do that one of these days. That's not happening. I don't think that'll Who's get over ratings. There? Hey, Caitlin Moynihan's over here. Hello. Okay. It's been a, a long Disney week. Disney Prince in the house. We have a Disney Woo! Prince in the house. Ladies and, and gentlemen. And as you like to say, former Broadway.com blogger. The former Broadway. What was the name of his vlog? Let me tell you who it is. It's Telly Leung is here from Aladdin. <laughs> what was the name of his vlog, Paul? Is it a test? Yeah. It's a pop quiz. Caitlin, God. wasn't alive back then? <laughs> <laughs> it was called Telly, do you know? No, he doesn't. It was called the God it was called Godspell according to Telly. Oh yeah, yeah, oh. yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. I look these things up to And be not only did he film it, he edited it. He was very <gasps> Which talented. Like. Uh, so before we fancy. get to that, <laughs> let's do our top five. An all-star cast has been announced for this 70th anniversary special. So, it's South Pacific's anniversary. Wow. Did you know How that? many years? Seven, 70. So you said <laughs> Thank it. you. I'm not Seven. listening. <laughs> so, uh, what they're going to do is, there's Broadway Dreams, a fantastic organization, is doing a special concert with uh, Raja Hammerstein organization. Mm -hmm. And some really cool people are doing it. Tell us. Carmen Cusack, who is the star of the national tour right. of the Lincoln Center production. Um, Alex Newell, Mama will provide once again. Uh, Two-time Tony nominee, Daphne Rubin Vega, and Tony nominator, Daphne Rubin Vega. Oh, I've been really? seeing her at all yes. the shows. She's doing her job. she's a Tony nominator. She has little glasses and a notebook, and not really. Ooh, very professional. I like, I like picturing her in that, in that role. Uh, Jose Lana, uh, Isabel McCalla, who's in the prom, Morgan James, and Kareem Suleiman. Suleiman, sorry. Sure. Uh, I should have practiced that ahead of time. This is all happening at the St. Regis, which is a very fancy hotel here in New York, at the Roof Ballroom on December 10th, which is like in a week from Monday at 7 p.m. And so Stephen Jamal, who is uh, Jamal, who's a fantastic music director, is is like reorchestrating the songs. Wow. New arrangements uh, by him. So anyway, it's going to be good. It's good music. South Pacific, it's Roger Hammerstein. Go check it out. Support a good cause. At the same Regis. <laughs> week from Monday. <laughs> and the junkyard just keeps adding more people to it. I have a question. How many cats are in cats? Because... There's You're, a Jellicle like news enough. item well, every day. Every day. Well, I think they're spreading it out for us. And Lucas Hedges, of course, was here as our yeah. guest yesterday, yes. and he is a big super fan of cats. Well, but who unfortunately, isn't? the Rum Tum Tugger has already been cast, and that's apparently the role. That's <laughs> um, that's do. disappointing. But I do have great news. Monka Strap will yeah. be played by Robert Fairchild, who ah. was a Tony nominee for An American in Paris. He's a good dancer. He's a very good dancer. <laughs> the end of this item. No, uh, yes, of course, he was a principal dancer with the New York City Ballet. And he did an American in Paris in London as well. Singer. And he's a, he's a triple threat. And he's handsome. And he's playing Monka Strap, who's kind of like the narrator of Cats. Did I get that oh, right? Oh, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I always yeah. kind of forget that. But we don't know what this movie is. He sort of brings is. us. Yeah, we don't know as what this movie is. As we always discuss, I always say it might be claymation. We don't even know. <laughs> No, I hope I not. I hope we people, get to see Bobby Fairchild dance. The more dancers that they cast, it feels like it it's going to be dancers. Dancing. That is what Cats is about. Cats dancing. Am I wrong? Well, yeah. No. No. You're not I'm not wrong. wrong. <laughs> You're not wrong. Go, go, Joe is coming back. Go, 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 Joseph. It's back in the West End. Ooh. Joseph and the amazing Technicolor Dream Co. It feels like, I feel like if you really, at, we have to ask Imogen, but I feel like if you really look, there's probably been 13 revivals of it in the West End. I don't know if Imogen, we're talking about Imogen Lloyd Webber. Yeah. Uh, Broadway.com contributor. I don't know that she's counted them all. <laughs> well, I think it's just always playing. It's always playing. And there's fun. always like a it's cute guy playing Joseph. Sure. So we know that it's coming back at uh, mm -hmm. the London Palladium. For 11 weeks, starting next, it's a next summer thing. Mm -hmm. So July 11th of next summer through September 8th. We don't know who the cute guy is yet, though. So True. stay tuned. And we're getting an official cast recording of this celebrated production. We are once again talking about the Yiddish Fiddler on the Roof. Now, of course, it's still playing at, let me tell you where it's playing. I will tell you. It's playing at the Museum of Jewish Heritage through December 30th. So you have okay. another month to see it there. But then it's moving to stage 42 uh, beginning on February 11th. Joel Gray directed. It's in Yiddish. Jackie Hoffman's in it. But they're going to have a cast recording. So that is exciting. Um, but they don't have a release date yet. And when they do, I'm sure we will Jackie talk about Hoffman it. Jackie Hoffman is not Tevya. 
Only in her mind. Or, or, Only in her or, mind. Or um, Golda. What's her name? Golda. <laughs> She's Yenta. <laughs> or Sprincy. The matchmaker. <laughs> She's Yenta. Her dream role. Yes. Our dream role for her. And even more people have been announced for Daddy. Okay, guys. There's this a play called Daddy. Go on. It's not about children and their fathers. <laughs> go on. It's about Alan Cumming being what? someone's daddy. <clears throat> uh, Jeremy O'Harris wrote the play. Um, he previously wrote uh, something called Slave Play. I, I'm not familiar with that. Um, but Alan's been attached to this for a while, but now they've announced the rest of the cast. Ronald Pete, Tommy Dorfman from 13 Reasons Why, mm -hmm. uh, K.N. Kim, Hari Neff, and Obi winner, Charlene Woodard, who's done a lot of great she's solo shows. Amazing, right? Remember yes. Remember she did all those great... Yes. It's time, Charlene, for another one. Okay, well, she's busy now. I'm ready now. for one. It wouldn't be called Daddy. I, I mean, maybe it would. I don't know. <laughs> oh anyway, it's at the Pershing, <laughs> Pershing Square Signature Center in 2019. It starts February 12th. And... Uh, Danya Tamor is directing. It's a co-production between the new group and the vineyard. the vineyard. So go find out all about daddy relationships. Um, Paul, thanks for that. <laughs> no, really. I just want to thank you for I that. I think it's time for the weekend. <laughs> Have a great weekend. Thank you. We're now going to welcome Telly Leung. Caitlin, tell us about our guest. Gladly. We have Telly Leung with us here today. He is currently wowing us all as the title role in Aladdin on the Broadway. And today, he just released a new holiday single, a new version of All I Want for Christmas is You. We got a lot to talk about. He's also appeared on Broadway in Godspell, in Transit, Rent, Allegiance, and like a bunch of other stuff. He's done a lot. You all know him. Uh, you may also know him from TV. He was in this small little show called Glee. Maybe you've heard of it. Uh, follow him on social media at Telly Leong and please leave all of your questions in the comments down below. Please welcome Telly and Beth. Thanks, Caitlin. Welcome, Telly. Hi, Beth. How are you guys? Hi, Caitlin. What's oh, going on? I feel on? like it's a homecoming when you're here. Oh, I love it here. We love having in this you. this gorgeous brand new studio. I love Thank it. Thank you. Thank you very much. So how are you doing? You've got so I'm much going on. Doing great. Yeah, I just, um, so I'm here right now this afternoon, but I, earlier today I was just rehearsing for the Red Bucket Follies for Broadway okay, Cares, Equity Fights AIDS. So uh, this used to be the uh, the benefit that was called Gypsy of the Year. They renamed it to be the Red Bucket Follies. Because they, the Red Bucket is what you would get the Correct. Donate. When you, you go to a Broadway donations. show during the fundraising periods for Broadway Cares, you would, um, as you exit the theater, you would see oftentimes actors in costumes and volunteers for Broadway Cares, mm -hmm. collecting for Broadway Cares. Um, and Broadway Cares is an amazing organization. You know, uh, uh, not only do they help men and it's women. It's Broadway Cares slash Equity, Equity Fights, Fights AIDS. AIDS. But not do only do they work. help men, and men, women, and children with AIDS, but they have also support 450 other social ser service organizations They're wonderful. around the country and around the world. And they even do disaster relief re funding. You know, just this week they gave over $200,000 to the wildfire relief out in California oh, for all those amazing. people that lost their homes yeah. and businesses. So it's a wonderful charity. They do incredible work. And so um, every year to celebrate kind of the, the end of the six week period of fundraising, they do a big, um, they do a big benefit. And uh, this year, uh, th um, the opening number of this big benefit is the reunion of, and the 60th anniversary of Flower Drum Song I'm that getting, opened I'm on Broadway. Are you getting it chills? opened in 1958 at the St. James Theater. And it was your Broadway debut. It was my Broadway debut. In the the revival. 2002 revival was my Broadway Not debut. So we have the 58 company, we have the film company. Wow. Um, we also have the 2002 revival company, and we have a whole new generation of Asian and Asian American performers That's amazing. Um, that are also on stage in this big opening number about legacy, because not only is this benefit about um, about the fundraising period, but it's also about, you know, kind of the, the school of, of passing it on, passing on this craft right. of theater to the next generation. And so, you know, we're And now it's called the Legacy Robe. Now it's called the, the Legacy Robe. Robe. We're celebrating all of the Asian American actors on Broadway who've won the Legacy Robe over the years, starting with Bayork Lee, who was the first Asian person to ever win the Legacy Robe. We all Robe. know from a chorus line. Yeah, so um, so it's I, I just came from rehearsals from there, doing choreography I haven't done in 16 years, but it's a blast <laughs> seeing all of my old castmates. Well, we have to get to all the stuff you're doing yeah. Yeah, but I want to talk about Flower Drum Song for a second. Yeah. Is it true? Yes. That you got that gig, you got that job because of Billy Porter? Oh, absolutely. I mean, Billy was and, my... He connects us all, does he not? He really <laughs> does. Uh, so Billy was my teacher uh, at, at Carnegie, Carnegie Mellon. Mellon. And he he was directing me my senior thesis show at the time, which was Company. I was playing Bobby and Company, a 22 year old Bobby. Oh, Bobby I'm a little baby. I'm a little more age appropriate for it Bobby, now. Bobby, Bobby. So, yes. um, but, you know, Billy's first Broadway show was... 
Miss Saigon, the original company, Miss Saigon. Right. He was in the ensemble. He stood in the back. He sang high notes. He did the gun dance. He did all of that, right? He was a GI, and he covered John. Um, so he knew so many of the Asian performers mm -hmm. that were on Broadway, and and um, he picked up the phone and he called his dance captain from uh, from Miss Saigon all those years ago. This gentleman named Mark Oka, who's a, who's a Broadway legacy row winner himself. Wow. For, he's done you know nine, ten Broadway shows. He happened to be the associate choreographer on. Flower Drum Song in 2002 and said, listen, I've got this That's great young Asian kid. He's a student at Carnegie Mellon. He has no agent. He has no anything, but you have to see him. I think he's really right for the revival of Flower Drum Song that's going to come in the fall after he graduates. So Billy Porter goes, I got you an audition. And in one of those closed auditions where like, you know, you only, you only get into that room if you have an agent or if you've done a Broadway show before. Yeah. It's an invited dance call. And so he says, get on that Greyhound bus from Pittsburgh to New York. You know, it's like a 12-hour overnight a ride. Story, yes. I got to New York. I got to Penn. You know, I got to Port Authority. Mm -hmm. Ran to Ripley Greer. Splashed some water on my face. Put on my dance clothes, and I was at my first Broadway dance call. And you know, you know, you do a jazz call. And you call, booked it, right? And then they cut people. Then they go now do the ballet combination. Then they cut people. Then they go. Do you have Sounds 32 like bars to sing? I mean, it's wow. So I was there all day and um, took the Greyhound bus back and. And that was my first. And they called show. you, not your agent, because you didn't have one. I didn't have one. So Tara <laughs> Rubin, you know, to this day, like when I see her, she, she she remembers that she's like she's one of those casting directors that's always, you know, on our side. I, mm -hmm. I feel like, and she she goes, I love calling actors and telling them they got the job. It's my favorite part of the job, and she and remembers that. Like, and so I was home amazing. with my parents when I heard, and so it was. Oh, it was that's great. so special. Yeah. And now you are a Disney prince. And now I am. Yeah. Eight man. times a week. You're wearing the vest. I am, and nothing else. <laughs> <You're fly> <laughs> Folks, well, not nothing. Else. Not it nothing else. Some baggy pants. <laughs> Some yes, very baggy right. pants. You're flying um, in the carpet. But I'm flying mm -hmm. on a carpet. It's and I'm having a, a really, really great time. It's um it's such a blast. You know, uh, it's it's been the the most fun two years getting to live out my Disney Prince dreams of doing that. And I, I'm there for still a little bit of time. I'm there till February. So you've 17th. announced your your final yeah, performance I'm, in I'm, February. Yeah, I'm done on I'm done in February. Um, but uh, but it's been a really really awesome time. I'm gonna I'm, I it's the the people there that building and that show. It's pure. Broadway musical theater joy eight yeah. times a week and we're I know that we're making people happier and lifting spirits eight times a week so so you've already been in it for over a year so you've already had a Christmas at Aladdin are I you have. are you psyched to do another Christmas time because I feel like Broadway uh, casts are like family we are and you celebrate and they they go all out so we do what you know are you we, do we decorate Christmas? around the theater my my dresser Neely she loves to decorate so I like she already has a tree planned out, like where she's gonna put the tree and where we're gonna hang the garland, and so um, it's very festive over in Agraba, over at the New Amsterdam <laughs> Theater um, during the holidays for sure. And um, you know, uh, I, we all love the holidays over there. Instead of Secret Santa, we do Secret Scimitar. <laughs> over there, we do a little gift exchange, and we always have a little Christmas party. And um, it's and it's this a blast. brings us to our next topic. You're single. Oh. Because <gasps> this man has the most buttery golden voice oh, in you. the world. It's so beautiful. Tell everyone what you're singing. Well, so um, my musical supervisor and arranger on Allegiance, Lynn Schenkel, she always does this yearly concert at Joe's Pub for ASTEP, which is Artists Striving to End Poverty. This is an, an incredible organization that was founded by musical uh, director Mary Mitchell Campbell, mm -hmm. who we all know and love. And, um, and it really seeks out to bring arts to those underserved communities that don't get the arts, not just in the United States, but around the world. I mean, wow. they've done work uh, here in the US, but also in India and in Africa. And the idea is that arts the arts has the power and the potential to save lives. And, and it has the power and the potential to kind of break that cycle of poverty, hmm. right? Because it, it kind of gives gives people a whole new way of looking at the world. And I thought you were going to say a whole new world. A I whole really new did. way. Well, almost, <laughs> I almost did. But it really does. It gives people a new perspective on what is possible. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what's so great about the arts. That's why I know I love the arts and I'm still in this. And I know many of us, that's the reason why we do this. Because mm -hmm. we get to we get to, um, we get get to to have a whole new perspective of the world, right? Yeah. So um, so what we've decided to do, you know, we, we sh I was part of this yearly concert at Joe's Pub. And it's happening again this year as well, uh, on December 10th, actually, at Joe's Pub, up. but uh, uh, but I we Lynn Shankle put together this great arrangement of Mariah Carey's "All I Want for Christmas Is You," 
and we we did it. It was great. And I said, you know what would be really great to to make it. I can't make the concert this year at Joe's Pub because I'm actually going to be singing for the Cancer Support Community, which is an so organization many charities. It's amazing. Uh, that night that is actually going to be, uh, that was very dear, near and dear to our beloved Mary Maisie. Like she was a huge supporter of that organization. And so um, I'll, be, I'll be singing for them that night. But I said, since I can't be at the ASTEP benefit, let's record it and let's give all the proceeds to ASTEP. So That's this can be this can continue to be something that makes money. Um, so not only will you get a fun ho new holiday song to add to your playlist, but you'll also be donating to a really great organization. And um, so I hope everybody out there, you know, you can get it Where on iTunes get it? Yes, exactly. and you can get Amazon. it on Amazon. Uh, listen to it on Spotify. Listen to it a bazillion times on Spotify because again, the more times you stream it, the the more proceeds go to go to A Step. And um, and uh, Lynn Shankel and I are really excited about it. And Michael Croyder, who's over at Yellow Sound, he mm -hmm. helped produce it. So um, we're, we're the three of us are really jazzed about it. It's beautiful. I just listened to it. It's really gorgeous. Okay, we've got to talk about one more thing. Yeah. And then we're going to get to your questions because I can see Caitlin scrolling <laughs> yes. through all of your questions. <laughs> and I know we'll get to them. Yeah. But... Yeah. Allegiance. Yeah. There's some stuff coming out with Allegiance. So there's a uh, documentary. Correct. So on December 4th, Fathom Events is doing a, a, a documentary of Allegiance to Broadway, which is actually... It is we so had, emotional. It, Watch, I mean, I just watched the awesome. trailer and I was just like... So oh. for all of my Broadway fans out there who don't kind of know how all the behind the workings, behind the scenes stuff happens, I mean, there was a camera there, luckily, when our whole creative team found out that we got the Long Acre as a right. house. I mean, stuff like that, that, you know, I, you know Things looking you just back never on see. it, you, you yeah. don't get to see that. And to get to see, you know, our writers and our creators who've been working on the show for eight years, all of a sudden get, realize that they're going to be on Broadway. I mean, the Amazing. joy of that. And also the stress and the terror of previews and mm -hmm. putting in changes. And, you know, our show is also very political. So, you know, the kind of the, the, the all the reactions, you know, and the right. controversy that our show caused as well. So um, it's really... Um, it's, I think for any Broadway fan that really loves theater, you, to get to see it from that side, a side that, you know, for the theater makers that we get to experience all the time is really, really cool. They really got in there and, and really captured what that was like, you know. But the show was also filmed as well. And the show that's, is also so that's filmed. that's a separate thing. And Fathom Events has actually preserved the show, and they're, this is a, an encore presentation of this that's going to be happening on December 11th. So, right. Um, I, I love what Fathom Events is doing with Broadway shows. You know, they've done this now with Newsies, and they're mm -hmm. they've done it with Bandstand, and it's, it's all of these it, yeah. yeah, it's all of these great shows for all of our friends out there who love Broadway. All of these people across America and across the world who love theater but can't make the trip to New York City. We are bringing Broadway to your local cinema and original cast. Yeah, and so you know, I encourage all of you the, to go to Fathom Events, go to their website, and find out where they're playing. Uh, Allegiance to Broadway and also uh, Allegiance, the actual musical, the actual show, yeah. um, on December fourth and December eleventh, and you know, get your family Check together and go 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 see. Play Broadway. the Christmas song in the car on the way. Yeah, you can do it. It'll Perfect. be in a full Telly Leon moment. <laughs> All right, and we're gonna get to your questions now because yeah. I've been waiting for so long. Yes. <laughs> So let's do the first question. Sure. Alec would like to know what your opinions are about the new live action Aladdin that's coming out. Okay, I'm I'm really excited for all the live actions. <laughs> Aladdin, Lion King, I'm so I'm so I, all the sort of remakes. I yeah. love that. But I don't know how I mean the Lion King is like a CGI mm -hmm. situation. This Aladdin, I don't really understand. Well, what I think it's exactly. what, what's really cool about Aladdin is that it's had so many iterations, right? So right. It, you start off with the folk tale that everybody knows that's been verbally passed on from generation to generation. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, then it became the Disney film, which so many people know. And then the Broadway musical is, it has all of your, the elements that you love from the the film. But mm -hmm. then now it's a Broadway, it's a big splashy Broadway musical right. that's two and a half hours long. So I think what the the this this film now, this live action film does, is kind of takes what people love from all of the different iterations and now translates it again and when is into this a new out? medium. Next summer? Oh gosh, I, it's like, I, I think spring, it's in the spring. March? I, I don't coming, even know. It's coming fast. Yeah. It's it's coming very very soon. I, I'm amazed that Disney's able to roll well. out all of these live actions as quickly as they. You know, I felt like Beauty and the Beast just came out. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, exactly. But um, but I think it's really really cool that they're reinterpreting them for this generation. And you're gonna go see it. Of course. Yes. First in life. Absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, and Elise would like to know, how do you personally relate to Aladdin? Oh, you know, um, I think that I think that we all can relate to Aladdin. Yeah. You know, um, first of all, the part, the, the Aladdin in our musical version, mm -hmm. um, we learned that Aladdin has just recently lost his mother. 
mm-hmm. and that um, he made a promise to his mother that he would never be a street rat and not steal again. That he was a he was a better he was a better man than that. That you know mm-hmm. that she she taught him better than that. Of course, he has to steal to survive because he steals food to live. But um, but I think there's there's uh, don't we all want to make our parents proud? Don't we all want to be you know what what we we don't want to let our parents down and we don't right. want to let our families down and we want to be the best versions of ourselves for them mm-hmm. you know and so i i definitely relate to that you know for sure and i think we can all relate to that um but also you know aladdin learns a big important lesson along the the course of the show and he has to learn that the worth of a person is not the clothes that he wears and how mm-hmm. much money he has it's 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 his actions and and what he puts into the world the positive action that he's able to put into the world and the good that he's able to put into the world that's the real measure of someone's worth that's something that he has to learn during the course of the night and i think that's um that's a lesson that we all can benefit learning from as well Mm -hmm. i love that i love that and uh greg you touched on this a little bit earlier but greg wants to know what made you choose mariah's iconic song for your christmas song and did you have any other options you were thinking about? well you know so people who know me well know that especially my aladdin castmates in agrava at half hour uh, we all like love to play music to get ourselves up and up and ready to go. And usually, if you stop by my dressing room on floor two and a half at the New Am, <laughs> you will hear a Whitney Houston tune or a Mariah Carey tune or like a '90s jam of some kind, and like will a we dance hear you jam. Singing along with Absolutely, <laughs> that is that is an essential part of my warm up. It, it happens, and so you know, oftentimes. So I mean, really, like I'm also just a big Mariah fan. Like I grew up with all you know when she, when Mariah came to be in the '90s when she was introduced to the world. Like yeah. that was right around the time that I was really getting into music and you'd go to the record store when they were still record stores and you would buy the newest single, Mm -hmm. you know, on cassette and then you would then buy the newest single on CD and then you would, you know, I remember for albums that I really wanted, there's a there used to be a giant record store downtown in New York called JNR Music World Mm -hmm. and they always had, you know, the the most stock. Oh, I see. Like so so and I would and I in my high school, I went to Stuyvesant High School downtown in New York City, which is a math and science high school, and sometimes I hate to admit this, but I would cut class. Go on. To go and buy whatever CD it was that was coming out. Like if there was a new Mariah CD. It's Mariah's fault, but you didn't do as well as you could. I also cut class for the rent for the rent double disc that when that album came out, I remembered like there were lines around the corner at JNR Music World. And then look how you came full circle with rent. Well, yeah. So, so, I mean, so even, uh, I'm not, I'm not saying you should go and cut class. Do not cut class. But sometimes. Now you can just stream it. Just press it and you can stay. For really good music. (laughs) Back in the day, you couldn't just stream it. You had to like get it in your hands and you had to get it the day that it came out. Oh my gosh, I love that. I love that. And let's do one more question. Sure. And Jane asks, how does it feel to look back at all that you've done so far in your career and see how many different things you've done, you know, with Aladdin movie and then the Rent live movie coming? Yeah. And just how does it feel? Do you ever take a minute and just be like, okay, wow. Yes, I guess I do (laughs) when I look at it that way. Um, So I I recently had a really, really cool thing happen to me. I I had my portrait added to the wall at Sardi's. And, and it looks good. <laughs> thank yeah. you. And I mean that's very that, honor. It's a like huge honor, honor for for people that are that are in our community. That's like uh, it's like it's like right up there. It's like neck it's and neck with Tony Award. You it's know what I mean? It really is. It's yeah. like it's that thing. And so um, and Sardi's, you know, personally too. When I got married to my partner Happy of fourteen years. Happy anniversary, by the way, coming up in January. Thank you. Two years. Right? Yeah, yeah, two years. We we have we had a reception at Sardi's. Because we met Is in the theater. Is there anything more show And so <laughs> his family, Jimmy's family from Indiana, and my family from New York, that's the room. You know, we, our families met in that room. And oh. so that room not only means a lot to me as somebody in the Broadway community, it means a lot to me, you know, as, as uh, just me personally. Yeah. And so, um, so and I, at this unveiling, I invited, I invited my close, dear friends from every Broadway show I've ever done, you know, so... It was wild to like be there, and somebody, somebody at Saudi said, "Wow, this is like your Broadway bar mitzvah <laughs> when you have like all of these people from the seven Broadway shows you've done all here and different elements of your life." And it was. Listen, um, if Leia Salonga ever does the uh, hora, I want to be there. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I just want to be. That's there. right. The chair dance. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. No, it's it's really it was um it was really exciting, and and so I I feel very lucky, and I feel the 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 luckiest part about my job through the sixteen years that I've kind of been on Broadway is. Is that um, is that I've met incredible people. Mm-hmm. I've met really amazing human beings in the process, and um, friendships that I'll take forever. So. Oh, that's so sweet. Well, Telly, thank you Thanks. for coming. You guys, thank you. Catch Telly Leung 
in Aladdin. Yeah. You have another two months to do that. Yeah. Wish him a happy birthday. His birthday's coming up. Oh, January yeah. 3rd. I'm a Capricorn. He's a Capricorn. <laughs> Keep that in mind. <laughs> You've got a wonderful song to stream. You've got Allegiance to Broadway. You've got Allegiance. Just stuff. He's got, he's got all his <laughs> charity stuff, the Red Bucket Follies. Wherever you go, you're going to bump into Tully. Yeah, I'm, 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 I'm And he's probably at Sardi's. If he's not physically there, he's on the wall. I, or, or hanging out at the bar upstairs. <laughs> or hanging out he's the either bar. hanging out on the wall or he's hanging out at the bar. That's right. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Thank you. Caitlin, take us on out. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. We are live at 5 every single day on Facebook. You can listen to us in a podcast form by searching for a hashtag live at 5 and hitting that subscribe button. Be sure to tune in on Monday.